Hey guys, today I want to share with you my top 12 books of 2023. I was able to read 145 books this year and I had some absolute bangers, a ton that I loved. It was so hard to narrow this down to 12, but I got 12. I put them into some fun categories that'll hopefully keep things interesting. And so let's hop right into it. The first award that I want to give out is the Finer Things in Life Award. And that goes to this book, A Man and His Watch. This, okay, one, this is one of just like the best unboxing experiences ever. Um, but also this book is freaking wonderful. It's literally just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous pictures of some really cool watches and then just a little story about them. And there's some that are super intense, you know, and super like, oh, like this is a really important, big, well-known watch. Uh, you know, it's the the Rolex that Sir Edmund Hillary wore when he when he summited Everest, you know, or whatever. And then some of them are just like, this is a $20 Timex that was just a friend of mine. And it's this super special watch from his like summer camp when he was a kid. And uh, so I just love this book. It is beautifully, beautifully done. And the, the slip cover and everything for it, lining up with the crown of the watch and everything on here is just like masterful. I absolutely love this book. And so the Finer Things in Life Award 100% goes to A Man and His Watch by Matt Rennick. I don't know how you say his name. Next up, we have the Get Your Crap Together Award. That goes to this book. Oh my gosh, reader come Home by Marianne Wolf. I have a full video about this book. This book is just an incredible treatise on the importance of reading and how the skills that make for good living, the only thing that we can scientifically point to that builds those skills of critical analysis, empathy, and reflection is learning to read deeply. And so if you need a book to scientifically kind of kick your butt into like, oh yeah, no, I really need to be reading some more and learning how to read better. Oh, this is the one, one of my favorite books of the year, by far one of my favorite books of all time. Um, just unbelievably good book about reading. Next, we have the Stretch Your Thinking Award. This has to go to The Body Code by Dr. Bradley Nelson. He wrote a book called The Emotion Code that I had read a few years before that was already stretch your thinking enough. Uh, and then he followed it up with this book. This is one of the most incredible books I have ever read in regards to healing and health. Um, but who will it stretch your assumptions and your thinking? The whole idea behind his whole system is this idea of quantum healing and the very scientifically backed, but still like, whoo, gotta, whoo, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot to process, man. Um, just this idea of the, the vibrations of energy and how energy is transformed and how the intention that you set actually changes the energy of things. And um, yeah, incredible, incredible book, but man, will it stretch your thinking and stretch your understanding of the world and how stuff operates. Um, really, really fascinating. I absolutely love his books. They have fundamentally changed my life and the health of me, Kim, our kids, um, and basically everyone in my family that I've, that I've worked through this, this system of healing with. Next up, we have the I Feel Seen Award. This has to go to the book Range by David Epstein. I have never read a book that made me feel more seen and understood of who I am with being a, a polymath in the making and someone who is just, just unbelievably curious about everything and wanting to know everything and wanting to be able to do everything. And this book gave me permission to be myself in a way that I don't really think any other book ever, ever has. Uh, the, the fundamental kind of thing that I took away from this book is he talks about how we have this saying that the jack of all trades is the master of none, but when that saying originated and where that saying originated from was back in the day, it was in reference to a guy who worked in the playhouses and he had been backstage and he'd been on stage and he produced things and he'd done all this stuff. And he was this guy that could just do everything in regards to these plays in the playhouses. And uh, the full quote of that was actually, the jack of all trades is the master of none, but oftentimes better than the master of one. And so if you are a jack of all trades, this book is absolutely required reading for you. You will feel seen like you never have before in a world of just people telling you to specialize all day long and you're just over here like, I don't want to specialize. I just want to know everything. Oh, this book is for you. Range by David Epstein. So, so, so good. Next up, we have the There Is No Try Award. This goes to How to Read a Book by Mortimer Adler. 
holy crap, before I read this, I was like, I don't need to read this book. Like, I know how to read a book. I read a crap ton. What are you talking about? I'm good. And wow, 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 wow. I read this book and it is not an exaggeration to say that it fundamentally changed how I read and how I approach reading and how I think about reading and how I just deal with books in general. This book kicked my butt in the best way and just brought this new level of understanding of this is what reading well really is. I love the definition that he uses of this idea of when was the last time you read a good book well. And his definition of a good book is a book that was slightly beyond your ability to to grasp it and to understand it and then the definition of reading it well is that you read it in such a way that by the time you finished it you had expanded your thinking and your understanding enough that it was now not as far beyond you as it was when you first engaged with it so like i look at that definition of like that's the last time that you read a good book well and i'm going wow um okay yeah all right, that's that's a that's a tall order, my good sir. <laughs> that is a tall order. Next up, we have the My Journal is Longer Than Your Book Award, and this goes to Becoming a King by Morgan Snyder. I listened to this book from the library and then bought my own copy of it and then went back through and read it. As I was reading it, I was journaling through it. I journaled 26,000 words in the course of reading this book, and Again, no exaggeration to say that it has fundamentally changed some things in my life. And God has used this book to just wreck so much stuff in my heart and in my life and rip out old patterns of belief and old agreements and old stuff and, and clear the way and rebuild new foundations for what he's doing next. And so this book is just has such a special place in my heart now that I, I it just... It will always be in the top number of books solely because of God, how God has used it to change my life in this year through, yeah, 26,000 words of journaling. It was a lot. Next up, we have the award of the Manual for the Manly Man. And this has to go to The Warrior Poet Way by John Lovell. John is just one of the most well-rounded manly men that... I have the pleasure of engaging with over the internet. I don't know him personally. I would love to meet him one day uh, just because I think he embodies just the well-rounded man that I want to be and just this idea of the warrior and the poet. And I love what he says and what he talks about in this book where he's like, you're not a warrior and a poet like 50-50 or whatever. Like you're full warrior and you're full poet and you have to learn how to embrace both of those. He does such a good job of balancing and bringing in all the warrior stuff that a lot of the uh, the... Christian books by men, um, a lot of them, if you are more strongly geared to the warrior side, it's kind of hard to listen to guys that you're like, yeah, but you're kind of a wuss. Or like, yeah, but you're like 80 pounds overweight, bro. And um, uh, I don't know, I just, I can't do it, you know? Um, and so he, he brings that, like John is an absolute freaking beast, but then he also brings this poet side that is oftentimes lacking in the guys that are super badass, you know, and you're like, yeah, but dude, read a book sometime. And also it's okay to play with kids. And also you should be loving and gentle and kind to your wife and not, you know, treat her like a drill sergeant. Like, so he just balances everything so well. This is by far one of the best single volume books that you could just pick up and just dig into to become a better man. Yeah. Absolutely love this book. Next up, we have the You Can't Be You, You Have to Be Better Than You Award. If you know what show that quote is from, leave me a comment. I really hope you do. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. You can't be you, you have to be better than you. Um, and that is going to go to 21 Servants of Sovereign Joy by John Piper. This is a big boy, and it is just a collection of 21 mini biographies of very influential men of faith throughout the years. And some of them you heard, you have heard of, some of them you haven't, but you've been influenced by without even knowing it. And overall, this book massively shifted some things theologically for me and how I view God's sovereignty, how I view the way that God works in the world, how I view just a, a bunch of different things, um, but really just left me with this this feeling of like, oh my gosh, like God wants to do so much through your life. And the only way that he's allowed to do that is through your submission 
to what he's trying to do. And it's through just radical, like radical, radical submission. And so this book challenged me in so many ways of like, hey, you know, where you're do where you're at is good. And compared to where you were, like where you're at is like real good, but also don't stop there. Like keep pushing and maybe like you won't be as influential in the world history as these guys, but you know what? Maybe you're supposed to be. And if that's what God wants to do, submit to it and just go for it and just keep pressing into what he has for you. So this book, absolutely, absolutely adore this book. This is one I will definitely be going through again. I love books that are collections of of biographies of great men that are very accessible. You know, most of these are like, it takes an hour, you know, or whatever to read, uh, to read kind of the overview of the life story of a guy, which is really accessible for most people, even though this is a honking big book. Um, but yeah, such a great book. Next up, I have the Stay Up All Night Award. I don't actually have this book, but this goes to Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This was one of my favorite novels of the whole year. I just absolutely loved it. And part of why I loved it too is because it's just standalone. And there's such beauty and such, uh, I think, power in being able to write a standalone novel well, right? There's a, there's a lot of complications that come with series, but there's also a lot of um, easier th aspects of being able to write a series and stretch things out, you know, and whatever, whatever. And just being able to stick to just one story just in and of itself, all contained here, um, is a really, really hard thing to do. And so people that do it well, I really appreciate. And this book, I just loved. I mean, the first night I started it, I think I read like 200 pages or something like that. Just sitting in bed, just like, I can't put it down. And so I loved The Martian. I absolutely love Project Hail Mary. It was just one of my favorite reads. And it's one of those novels that I feel like I could basically just recommend to anybody looking for a good story without any fear of like, oh, you know, uh, nah, like I don't really, I don't know if that would be kind of your, your deal or whatever. Like, I just feel like it's just a very accessible story. And the writing is easy enough and the story is engaging enough that pretty much anybody that starts it will finish it. And I can't imagine anybody not liking it in the end. Next we had the Laughter is Literally Good for the Soul Award. This goes to the book Delete That by John Christ. John is one of my favorite comedians and I saw that he put out a book and I was like, oh yeah, sweet, I'm gonna grab that. That's probably gonna be really funny. And what I wasn't expecting is, yes, it's really funny, but also, holy crap, the amount of wisdom that this guy has gained from the stuff that he's gone through of being canceled and screwing up really bad and, and all this stuff and what he's learned out of that and how he's grown out of that was actually like very impactful to me. And, and he had so many great things to say that were like, dude, like I'm sitting here, I read it from the, from the library, but I'm like, man, I wish I had a pen. Cause like, I want to be underlining some of this stuff. Cause like, holy cow, dude. And it's, it's amazing to me to see how his comedy has come back from being canceled and how now he's even funnier because he's not living under this, this uh, weight of fear of saying the wrong thing, right? And so some of the things like he says, you know, and yeah, they don't land or whatever, but I found now that I appreciate his comedy even more because he's free to kind of push the boundaries and really say stuff that other people won't say, which is what makes things funny right? Because he's not living under this fear of like, oh, what, what, what will happen? You know, he's just sitting over. He's like, dude, I've already been canceled once before. Like, what are you going to do? Cancel me again? Okay, sure. Like, I know where I screwed up. Like I've gone through, I've done the work to like get myself healthy and, and try to change my trajectory so I don't go there again. And so now, like, I'm just not going to live in fear of all this stuff happening again. And so absolutely love this one. Laughed my head off, but also, man, just had so many times of like, Wow. Okay. Wow. And then second to last, we have the, yeah, it's a big book, but you're a big boy award. And my friend is currently borrowing this, so I don't have my physical copy, but this is the Count of Monte Cristo. This is a honking book. It's like, you know, 900 or a thousand pages or something like that. And, uh, kind of scary, kind of intimidating, uh, especially if you just pick it up and you're like, Woof! like, okay. Um, but what was amazing with that is just the story was so good and so compelling and there's so many plot twists and it's so, so realistic and so engaging with the characters the, and the way that it's written. It, you literally don't want it to end. By the time you're getting towards the end of it, you're like, oh, I kind of want to slow down because I don't really want to, I don't want to run out of stuff. I really want to just kind of keep going forever. 
Um, and so that is one that I can wholeheartedly recommend to people of just a big honking book that you would think you would never be able to get through that I guarantee you will be easier than what you think it is because it's so engaging and it's so readable and the story is just so, so, so good. So that one was by far one of my favorites from the whole year as far as the fiction category goes. And then last but not least, the final award that I have is the Old People Ain't As Ignorant As You Think Award. And this has to go to a book called Hunting with the Bow and Arrow by Saxton Pope. This book came out in the 1920s and I heard about it from Cameron Haynes' book, Endure, and he was talking about how this book was just one of his favorite books of all time, and he had this quote from it where Saxton had said that he and Young had, quote-unquote, trained down to rawhide and sinew. And I was like, bruh, anybody who can write that line? Like, I am reading the whole freaking book because that line, holy mother. Uh, and so I picked it up. And it tells the story of kind of how bow hunting came to be in the U.S. and how it was this, this last American Indian who came out of the, the mountains of California and Saxton Pope was the, the physician from the college that was assigned to this guy and how this guy started teaching him how to bow hunt. And then he got with Young and they, they got on it and they started bow hunting and traditional archery hunting and they learned all this stuff from this Indian and they fell in love with this, the beauty in the sport of bow hunting and how that led to all these other things. And so as, a, as someone who's bow hunted, but who has a father who's just obsessed with bow hunting, it was super interesting to me. And getting back into it this year, my kids were getting into it. I got them all bows for Christmas. And uh, so just fascinating to read the stories of these men, but also to hear the wisdom and the stuff that they had and that they were able to do and that they could put up with. And it just reminded me of this thing of like so often, especially in like the nonfiction realm, like we place so much value on the newest book about whatever, you know, the newest, it's, it's like always got to be the newest one. I do this all the time. You know, I, was like, I just want to go see what, what new books are coming out about this and about that. And there's a tendency to discount the, the wisdom of an older generation just because it's like, oh, well, that wasn't our time. And that's just is a very dangerous game because holy crap, them old people ain't as ignorant as you think. And in a lot of cases, you ain't as smart as you think you are. So definitely a great one. If you're a bow hunter, that one is like required reading. It's so interesting to learn the history of all of it and uh, just really, really great engaging story. So there you have it. There's my 12 favorite books from 2023. I would love if you guys leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite book from this past year was. I'm always looking for great books. And so leave it, leave it, leave it, leave all the, all the recommendations as you possibly can. I would love to read as many books as, as is humanly possible in this next, <laughs> in this next year. So anyways, hope you guys had a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.